Xbox Live and Games with Gold are being completely removed in September for a new system called Game Pass Core. So if you guys want to know more about what Core is all about, what's going to be happening with your games with gold and everything in between, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Xbox Game Pass Core is launching on September 14th. Game Pass Core will give players access to Xbox's advanced multiplayer network as they put it. We're basically just online multiplayer. We also get a collection of 25 games thrown in there as well, which we'll cover a little bit later in this video. You also get access to exclusive member deals, which to me is kind of irrelevant. Most of the deals are just kind of maybe a little discount here or there, but nothing too crazy, really. Not, nothing like a Steam sale, at least. For all 9.99 users, per month or for all users are paying $60 a month for Xbox Live. So it's the same service you're getting, but just really with some more stuff. Xbox is getting rid of games with gold, which has been a long running service where basically you'll just get a handful of games for free. You just need to download it and it's yours. It was a great system, but I never really used it a whole lot. Most times it was just kind of games like, yeah, I don't really care or see myself playing that a whole lot. But I'm sure there are people out there who loved games with gold, downloaded everything as soon as they could and stuff like that. Um, but I think now they're just trying to merge everything into these Xbox Game Pass system, which I think is kind of the better system, honestly. I find it more useful anyways. You're getting rid of that, but you're also getting this little package of like 25-ish games that are, are actually like really good games, which is really nice. And Xbox does state that they'll be adding new titles along with this launch of 25 titles. And they've actually provided a list here we can check out. For ourselves, we have games like Among Us, Descenders, Dishonored 2, Doom Eternal, The Fable Anniversary, Fallout 4, Fallout 76, Forza Horizon 4, Gears of War 5, Grounded, Halo 5 Guardians, for all you Halo fans out there, Halo Wars 2, Hellblade, Human Fall Flat, Inside, Ori, Psychonauts 2, State of Decay 2, and Elder Scrolls Online. So a pretty solid list of games from the Xbox Studios right there, especially games like Doom Eternal or Fantastic Dishonored 2. I've heard amazing things about, never got a chance to play it. Fallout 4, 76, both solid games right there. I'm surprised Halo Infinite isn't thrown into this as well. It would be great to see Halo Infinite be able to be played by people for free, essentially, along with this whole system, right? Because Halo Infinite's campaign is amazing. I would love to see more people get a chance to play that. And if they play the campaign, they might switch over to play the free to play multiplayer and stuff like that. So how's this whole pricing model going to work? Now you got Core, you got Console, PC, and Ultimate Game Pass. How's this all going to work out? Well, they put together a nice little graph for us to kind of check out. So for example, right here, you can see on Core, if we zoom in right here, got yeah, online multiplayer access, the catalog of the 25 games that we mentioned there, and your members deals and stuff like that. It's nothing too crazy. For Game Pass on console, it's $10.99, which is a dollar more for some reason. We basically get unlimited Game Pass right there, day and date games, and also members. So you don't get day and date games for Game Pass on the core version of it. So for a dollar more, you get just full on Game Pass, which I think is kind of the deal with that one right there. PC, same thing as console as well, but for some reason, a dollar cheaper. Don't really know why. And plus you get EA Play membership on top of that, which is huge. So you get to play some EA titles that are gonna be available through this. That's how I played like Battlefield 2042 is through EA Play membership. So that's a really great addition. And then you have Ultimate, which gives you access to Game Pass on PC and on console. You also get the game, full on Game Pass experience, new games day and date, membership deals, uh, online console multiplayer, and also EA Play membership. Uh, but ultimately, like really, if you're playing on Ultimate, like you do get like, some extra like, little perks and stuff like that, right? Like I know like with Halo Infinite, you're getting some extra skins within the game and stuff like that. So it kind of depends if you like your little extra like little trinkets of goodies that come with your game or whatnot. Personally, I'm actually thinking about downgrading from Ultimate because it's going to be $16.99 a month down to PC Game Pass. It's I don't like the only console I have is an Xbox One. So I think PC might be the best one for me. With Game Pass Ultimate, I never really feel like I'm experiencing anything more than I would with like regular console or PC. So I think I might just downgrade to that. Right now, the Game Pass Ultimate perks aren't really that much of an incentive to really pay the extra money. If you can show you guys right here, what I'm looking at at the moment. Yeah, like a see if these like in game like Obsidian Banjo, something for some Smite, Naruto, uh, some extra kit for like Battlefield 2042, some Apex stuff. Like, but this is this is the whole thing. This is all you get for like an extra like six dollars. I just don't really see the value of that right now, unless the Xbox has some bigger plans when it comes to their perks service or something like that. But for the most part, like all of this is kind of just little extra things that don't really matter a whole lot. A lot of cosmetic kind of things. And so, I mean, if you want to have, if you're that kind of person who needs everything, right, then. 
this might be something for you but i think for the most people i think you're just gonna need to just jump in and just get either console or pc like i said or if you play on both console and pc then ultimate is the way to go for sure like yeah the little extra bits of in-game content you get sometimes with game pass ultimate is pretty nice uh but for the most part they're kind of just like little cosmetic little things here and there double xp boosts and stuff like that it's nice but i don't think it's worth the extra six dollars a month for a subscription service which is on top of all your other subscription services that you're paying for though if you're the type of person who hops between console and pc gaming and you want a little bit of everything ultimate is probably your jam but yeah i think if you're mainly on a console or just on a pc you probably want to just go with console or PC Game Pass. So if you're an Xbox Gold user right now, what is going to happen? What do you need to do? Well, turns out you don't really need to do anything. On September 14th, Xbox Live Gold members will automatically become Game Pass core members and you get access to the 25 games that we mentioned earlier. Games with gold will go away on September 1st. Though players can continue to access any Xbox One games they've previously redeemed through Xbox Games with Gold if they remain on Game Pass Core or Game Pass Ultimate members. And regardless of subscription status, any Xbox 360 titles redeemed via Games with Gold, you'll just be able to keep in your gaming library. So I feel like Xbox One games with games with gold is getting really screwed over because you have to subscribe into the service be able to maintain the keep playing those games. This kind of keeps going back into that same thing I keep seeing a lot often when it comes to these games as a service kind of things that one, especially with the Xbox Game Pass service, that if you're not paying for the service, you don't have any games. Well, Game Pass is great. I subscribe to it as well and definitely put, take advantage of it. But I know that like if I stop subscribing to it, well, I'm not going to be able to play any games because, well, it's all tied to the service. Like, for example, if I were just wanted to go back and play, say, like Black Ops 1 or Red Dead Redemption 2 on my Xbox One, just take it from the closet back here, plug it in and play. I can do that without having to do any kind of extra surcharges or anything weird. But if I wanted to do that, say on Game Pass side of things, well, then I'd have to start paying the money, which just leaves the control out of the player's hand into the corporation's hand. So you're kind of at the mercy of whatever Xbox wants to do when it comes to their services, which might sound terrible. But the thing is that most of the times with older games, I don't really go back to play them, right? Like, yeah, occasionally I might just do that, but there's just so many new games that keep being released get me excited to play those i don't really give myself time to well play any older games so even though it sucks to have like that control out of the player's hand but the thing is that like in reality yeah i'm just gonna be probably playing the newer stuff and also just kind of like go back to this list of games that they're providing us like some of them are very good but then a lot of these i find to be just kind of lackluster especially since you have like the plethora of xbox studio and bethesda games available for you to play right here right now I mean, this might be something where like, well, we want to try to get players like enough to where they feel satisfied, but not enough to where they don't feel the need to get into Game Pass. Like I'm shocked that Halo Infinite is not on this list right now. Or Forza Horizon 5, that game's fantastic. It's one of the most popular games on Xbox and you're just not gonna give it to the players to help boost up that player count in any capacity. So since it's more of an online type of open world-ish type of game. But don't get me wrong, games like, like I said, Doom Eternal, Fallout 4 are fantastic games. I played a good amount of Halo 5 Guardians, even though that population of the game is kind of just like non-existent right now. I don't know, I just feel like the list right here just seems like one extra game in there that really sells the deal. Like, oh yeah, I gotta buy into this service because I get all this good stuff, right? Overall, I think this is a good change that's happening with the Xbox Gold Game Pass system i felt like those eventually this was going to merge together into one big package deal and we'll see if there are any more additions coming in with this activision merger with xbox but until then I'll catch you guys on the next one peace out